Do you want to extend the viewing time of your YouTube videos so you can get more views and subscribers? In this video, you'll learn what an end screen is, what the current requirements are, what elements you can show on your end screen, some of the best practices, and how to track the performance of your end screen. Hello, my name is Herman Dross from DrossDesigns.com. If you want to learn how to grow your audience on YouTube and generate traffic, leads, and sales on autopilot, hit the subscribe button, then click the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. Did you know that watch time is one of the main ranking factors on YouTube? It means that if you keep people watching to the end of your video and watching successive videos in a row, YouTube will promote your video on other people's channels. You also need 4,000 watch hours to meet one of the requirements of the YouTube Partner Program so you can enable monetization on your channel. So what is an end screen? It's the part of the video that shows in the last five to 20 seconds. Your video has to be at least 25 seconds long to show the end screen. The beauty of the end screen is that it will show up at the end of your video on both desktop and mobile devices. What can you show on your end screen to get more watch time on your videos? You can link to videos or playlists on your YouTube channel. You can get viewers to subscribe to your channel. You can promote your website, a merchandise site, or a crowdfunding site. Here's how to add an end screen to one of your YouTube videos. Go to your video manager on the Creator Studio dashboard. Select the video that you want to add the end screen to. I'm going to select this one, click edit. At the top here, click end screen and annotations. As you can see, I've already added an end screen to this video, but we're going to recreate it. On the left here, we've got preview. So if we click on that, so this shows how the end screen appears in the last 20 seconds of this video. If we click on view, we can show grid. We can snap to element and we can snap to grid. So I'm going to check all of those. Then I can use a template. So here I've got uh, one video, one subscribe, shown in different positions. Then we've got one video, one subscribe, one link. Here we've got two videos. Here we've got two videos and one subscribe, which is the round profile icon. Then we've got four videos. So we can select one of these templates and you can also choose uh, import from video so I can import an end screen from one of your videos and also I can enter the URL at the, at the bottom here. For this end screen I use the last 14 seconds and uh, I put the subscribe link first that's for viewer element and uh, then a video. Now you can move these elements around the subscribe link comes first then the best for viewer video and then lastly my a related video and then you can expand the timeline if you wish okay let's get rid of some of these elements and we'll recreate the end screen so let's click on that delete this element click the pencil icon delete the element delete that element on this video I added a customized window so we can use a template if we wish. Click Use Template. We can do two videos and a subscribe. So I've got a subscribe link, which is here, and I can move this around if I wish. Then this element, I've got uh, Edit the Element, so I can choose a video or playlist. Choose an element here, Most Recent Upload, Best for Viewer, or Video Playlist. So I'm going to check Best for Viewer. And I've got Most Recent Upload, Best for Viewer, Video Playlist, so I'm going to save that one. I'm going to select the playlist for this next one. Choose video playlist and check playlist. Let me I'll select YouTube channel row. So now we can preview it. Click preview. Okay, I want to move this a little bit over. Click preview again. That's better. If you're satisfied with it, then just click save. I can also import an end screen. This is how the end screen appears. So I've got my best for viewer, then I've got my playlist, and I've got my subscribe button. Then I've got my little uh, window at the top here. Then I just click save. But if I want to add an element, because I can add four elements all together, click add element. So I can do a video playlist, subscribe, which I've created already, uh, channel, or a link. So video playlist, here's most recent upload, best for viewer, or video playlist. Then subscribe, I have already. Channel, I can just put the uh, link to another YouTube channel and I can create a custom message. Then I can also create a link. This can link to an associated website. 
So uh, this should be a, a website that's associated with your channel. We've got a bunch here. We've got approved retailer sites. These are all the approved retailer sites. And we've got crowdfunding sites. This is a list of approved crowdfunding sites. The associated website, a website that's associated with your channel. I'm going to link directly to my associated website, which is my landing page. Got the title, YouTube worksheet. Uh, they got my image here. And I select call to action. I click download. Click create album. And uh, here you can see it's overlapped on the other one. So I'm going to move it over here. So if you overlap, then it'll show a red mark here. And it says, please add space between elements. So I'm going to move this one up top here. And we can move the elements around. So I'll put this best view at the top here. And then I'll put the ebook at the bottom. Then we can preview it. That looks pretty good. Then we can time these elements to come in at different times. So, for instance, we could put this uh, subscription first, then best for viewer, then YouTube growth, and then the worksheet. Let's preview that. Subscription, best for viewer, playlist, ebook. Looks pretty good. And then we can just save it and we're ready to go. Here's how to check the performance of your end screens. Click on analytics in your dashboard. Go down to end screens. We've got end screen elements shown. This is the number of times an end screen element was shown. Then we've got the number of times an end screen element was clicked. End screen element clicks. And we've got the clicks per end screen element shown. How often the viewers clicked an end screen element when it was shown. It looks like the best for viewer element gets the highest number of clicks and clicks per screen element shown. Let's click on this video. Best for viewer came up as a top. 33% of the elements shown. 173 clicks. And clicks per end screen element, 2.86%. Then the playlist, how to grow your channel in 2018. That got 33%. Only 24 end screen element clicks. And subscribe got 18 end screen element clicks. So best for viewers is definitely the best choice when it comes to showing an element for your end screen. Here are some of the best practices for creating end screens. Number one, make sure the elements are relevant to your video. For example, if you link to a video or playlist, make sure it's relevant to the video that people are watching. Number two, encourage viewers to click on the end screen elements by using calls to action. For example, I say, if you want to grow your audience on YouTube and generate traffic, leads, and sales on autopilot, Click the subscribe button. Number three, remember to leave 20 seconds at the end of your video when editing it. This will allow you to add the end screen after you've uploaded the video. Number four, arrange the elements on the timeline so they appear at different times. For example, you can show the subscribe button first and ask people to subscribe. The second and third elements, you could redirect people to a video or playlist. The fourth element, you could redirect to your landing page. Now you know how to get more views and subscribers to your videos and channel using end screens. If you want to get even more watch time optimization tips, click the card icon. If you want to learn how to grow your audience on YouTube and generate traffic leads and subscribers on autopilot, click the subscribe button below and check out the related videos.